So we're going to set out proving Euclid's division lemma using steps. So the first step I've written, uh, the first case we're going to see is where k equals 1. And if k equals 1, then we're going to plug it in as 1 here and get p equals q plus r. But as we know from this statement right here, r has to be less than k but greater than or equal to 0. And if k is 1, r has no choice but to be 0. Therefore, p equals q. So that's a pretty trivial case. Let's look at the case where k is going to be greater than 1. So I'll draw a dividing line and we'll write this is case number 2. Okay, so if k is greater than 1 then that's where that's where the real um, proof has to come in. So we see that if k if k is going to be greater than 1 then we uh, have some representation of p to the base k and that we know from the basis representation theorem. So let's see how I want to write this. I think I'll do p equals a sub s k to the s plus a sub s minus 1 k to the s minus 1 and we're just going to keep adding and eventually we'll get to a sub 1 k plus a naught and since we're using the basis representation theorem Remember that all the AIs satisfy the same conditions as the basis representation theorem. Check out that video if you forgot, but quick refresher, all the AIs have to be less than K. Okay, so this is our P, and we've written, and now what we can do is we can factor out a K out of all the terms except the last one, which has no K to give. So we're going to do it like this. Factor out K, A to the S, A sub S, uh, K, S minus 1, plus A, S minus 1, K s minus 2 plus dot 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 so we're going to write it like this and we're going to let this we're going to go over here we're going to let this quantity right here be our q so that the whole thing becomes we'll go up here k q and we're going to let this quantity right here brr so it becomes kq plus r so what we've successfully done is we've written p in the form kq plus r or we've shown that we can do it using the basis representation theory. now we're going to go ahead and try we're going to assume that there's another way that there's another way um so we're going to use the uh opposite of this since this is unique integers we're going to say that there's another set so we're going to say there's some uh so this said there's unique integers q and r, so we're going to say this un q prime and r prime are two new integers that also satisfy our p equals q prime times k plus r prime, just like the other q and r did. So if this is true, if this is true, then this q prime has to have uh, its own representation, so just like Q did. So maybe I'll use a different color for this one. So we can find a representation of Q prime to the base K. And how would this representation look? We're gonna write it like we're gonna write it like this using a little different notation. So we're gonna say B sub T K to the T plus dot 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 and of course these T's would the next term would be B sub T minus one K to the T minus one going all the way down to B sub one K plus B B naught or B sub zero, and again we can uh, we can put this representation into our new equation right here, and say P equals and Q prime is just B sub T K to the T plus K plus B naught times K plus R prime. Okay, so now we're going to factor this K into here, and we're going to say this is B sub T k to the t plus 1 plus dot 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 plus b sub 1 k squared plus b naught k plus r prime. And what we need to see now is we need to use another part of the basis representation theorem. So now let's just uh, recap what we've done. So here we have a representation of p to the base k and here, here we have a representation of p to the base k. But remember that there can only be one representation of the of p 
p to the base k by the basis representation theorem, which means that these two have to be equal, which means that this must equal must equal this. And using that piece of knowledge, we can go ahead and make our comparison. We can say that since this constant term here is r prime, and on the back our constant term is a naught, which we've called r, we see that r prime equals r. And now we need to set out and prove that over here we see that enclosed in this k, all this is q. And enclosed in this, uh, and multiply this k is our q prime. We can say that q prime equals q. So now we've shown that for, if we assume that there's more than one set of q and r that can satisfy our equation, that's not possible because then r equals that new r and q equals that new q. So we've proven that there's only one possible representation for our case number two where k is greater than one.